MC Reads Steps Out of Silos. Welcome, uh, Leighton Gage. Thank you, Matti. Uh, a crime novel author. Uh, people tend to say, Matti, Matti, MC. I mean, you business books. I mean, that's just a narrow span of, uh, uh, of, of books. And, uh, you know, you happen to be in Helsinki. I am. I'm uh, delighted and, to be here. And uh, your first, or your, one of your books is now being uh, translated into Finnish. Mm-hmm. Uh, by Helsinki Kirjat, Haudatut Muukalaiset, Buried Strangers. Exactly. And uh, I thought it would be very, very nice to chat with you uh, as this is a, a crime novel, which if I look tired, it's it's because of you, <laughs> because I ended, I started to read this and, and uh, I felt that I... Uh, I uh, got lost in the Amazons. I'm very flattered. So you actually went right through it. Eh? <laughs> But I also uh, found out that it starts with uh, something like, uh, is it 37 dead people buried or, or, or... Yes. But I guess, you know, the, the thing is, obviously, uh, this is a crime novel, but it's, it's definitely a crime novel in Brazil. Yes. So help us sort of get to know Mario Silva, which is the, the uh, Brazilian police officer that I guess is, is, is key in your uh, crime novels. Well, he's Chief Inspector Mario Silva. Okay. Mati, and he is uh, Brazilian federal police. <laughs> there are all sorts of police in Brazil. Uh, you have the municipal police, most of whom are corrupt. You have the military police, most of whom are corrupt. And you have the federal police who are only partly corrupt. But in Brazil, and I can say this, by the way, because... That's right. I, I don't want to get you into trouble because this is going to be in, in <laughs> It's going to be all over the world. <laughs> But, you know, I've lived in Brazil since uh, 1973, on and off. And I, my wife is Brazilian. Uh, my accent, you can hear it. I'm American. But the language we speak at home is Portuguese. I have uh, four of my daughters born in Brazil, so they have Brazilian passports. And... Uh, Uh, all of my grandchildren have Brazilian passports. So I speak with a certain degree of authority about the country, and I write about the country with uh, what I hope is truth. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this gentleman is based on two different Brazilian cops that I know. And the advantage of being able to write this kind of a book about the federal police is the fact that they are, first of all, they have a national mandate. So I can carry readers all over the country, and it's a very big country. This is mm-hmm. one of the first things you have to recognize. I mean, recognize they about take, take a, an overnight flight in yes. the beginning, yes. <laughs> <laughs> which is a cheaper flight, I understand. So there is well, where we live in Brazil, to give you an example, uh, we are the northern border is about three and a half thousand kilometers from the city of Sao Paulo, where I live, and Sao Paulo as a population was about. Four times the size of all of Finland. You know, it's about 22 million people. Mm-hmm. And the southern border, the one with Uruguay, is 1,850 kilometers to the south. So it's a very big country, very diverse, and only the federal police cover it all. Mm-hmm. And the other thing about the federal police is that there are no, for example, in the United States you have uh, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. You have the Secret Service that protect the president and go after counterfeiting. You have uh, uh, Homeland Security. You have uh, all these other kinds of police forces. In Brazil, the federal police does all of that, and they also control the borders. So they're like, uh, you know, the, the customs people mm-hmm. at the borders. So by writing about the federal police, I get, first of all, the most honest of Brazilian policemen, Uh, and second, I get people with a national mandate who can uh, investigate any kind of crime. And that makes for more interesting books. Mm-hmm. So this is actually the second novel that I wrote, and it deals with, uh, well, that much I can tell you, <laughs> without spoiling the book. It deals with organ theft, which mm-hmm. is a reality in Brazil. The first book, which uh, someday might be published in Finland, Uh, deals with uh, the issue of uh, land reform. Mm-hmm. So it deals with um, liberation theology and uh, the landless workers movement, a little bit more esoteric. Uh, the third book deals with issues of the prostitution of young girls. 
which Brazil, after Thailand, is probably most famous for in the uh, illicit sex trade. But anyway, I'm getting off, off the subject. Any, any uh, you know, I haven't read the full book, but uh, I think if you look at, at Finland and our view of Brazil, it's mm -hmm. football. Not this time around, <laughs> but, but I hope in uh, 2014, <laughs> yes, yeah. because that will be the first time in, uh, in 60 years that Brazil yeah. will be uh, hosting. hosting the World Cup, yeah, and we're all very hopeful, yeah. and yeah. we were all very disappointed this year, <laughs> and last, you know, four years ago as well. Yeah, because that's, I think, you know, you, know, you, you, you were part of uh, uh, your author tour uh, mm -hmm. last night at the Akatemin and Kirjakauppa, the bookstore in Helsinki. And, and basically, I think, uh, you know, I, I sort of started to read the book with, with your sort of comments on corruption, uh, mm -hmm. the size of the country. Uh, and, and, you know, you didn't have to read very far that you sort of ran into those items. I try and do it subtly, though. Yeah. I hope you agree. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't force that sort of thing down people's throats. But it does provide, I think, an interesting background. It's a little bit more uh, exotic than maybe many crime novels because, uh, you know, I, I love crime novels. They're the things that I've been reading all of my life. And what I like most is, for example, the, the Nordic crime novels. What I like about them is the fact that I learn things that I don't know about cultures and hopefully, you know, I find there's a great deal of ignorance about Brazil. Um, there are people that really think the capital of Brazil is Buenos Aires, for example, mm -hmm. which is strange to me, but <laughs> there it is. And yet, you know, it's, um, it's the fifth largest country in the world. Yeah. I think Finland has got what? You guys have 340,000 square kilometers or something like that. Brazil is eight and a half million square kilometers. And the population is 200 million, which makes it also the fifth largest country in the world in terms of population. But a lot of people don't know that. Yeah. The other thing that you pick up very early in this is the, uh, the sort of the, the uh, distribution of wealth. Mm. I mean, you will immediately detect that there is these, uh, you know, very poor conditions that people in, and then there's these gated communities. I'm sure that... Last night you were talking about the, the uh, number of helicopters or private jets uh, being sort of second in the world next to the U.S. Second largest fleet of private jets, second largest fleet of uh, private uh, helicopters. Probably a, a, a But you know, people think of Brazil as a poor country. And, and this is one of the things that uh, perhaps people reading the book will be surprised about because Brazil is not a poor country. Brazil is a very rich country with a lot of poor people. Mm -hmm. And it's a big difference. And as you say, it's the distribution of wealth. 1.6% of the population of Brazil owns 50% of the land. So you're talking here about a country that uh, puts satellites into space. Uh, Finnair, for example, flies Brazilian jets from Embraer. Uh, there are a lot of Americans driving around and Europeans driving around in Volkswagens, which are built in Brazil. Petrobras is a huge... Petrobras is huge. Brazil is independent in terms of petroleum and in terms of natural gas. It is the largest exporter of uh, soy in the world. It is the largest uh, uh, exporter of beef in the world. It's um, virtually arable from north to south and from east to west. Uh, it has... The Amazon River alone is 20% of all of the fresh water in the world. And in that Amazon River swim, I think, more than 600 species of fish, which is more than you have in all of the Atlantic Ocean. And in the rainforest around it, you've got uh, 300 species of hummingbirds, you've got uh, <laughs> 400 species of mosquitoes. It's very diverse. Leighton Gage, I hope that people would pick up the book and uh, you know take it as your guide to Brazil. <laughs> I so, hope so thanks for coming. Thank uh, you so much, Martin. Thanks for visiting Finland. Thanks for Helsinki Kiria to to translate your book into Finnish. Hopefully, we'll have more of them um, as as time goes by. Thank thanks. you, Martin. I really thanks. appreciate it. Thank you.